Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. Broadcasting nationwide, this is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of Gun Talk. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. That's one Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Having fun talking about guns. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. By the way, we're giving away Relia bolts today. Or at least a few. We've got a couple of more to give away. That's the uh, the new AR-15 bolt from the Sharps Rifle Company. If you want to see more about it, go to srcarms.com. That's srcarms.com. You can see what they're all about. They, By the way, they've slashed the prices on these things drastically. They're Instead of going through dealers, they're going direct now. So uh, if you want to go there, by all means do that. Have you seen the... Um, the new PSA from the anti-gun front group, uh, Evolve. Remember we had uh, Rebecca Bond from that group on here, and um, she just couldn't answer a lot of questions. I put a lot of questions to her. She she actually cornered me at uh, SHOT Show, wanted to talk to me about getting me involved and helping them out with their message. No, I don't think so. Their newest PSA shows kids playing with sex toys, saying that if you hide things, kids find them. That they're trying to make the point that you can't hide your guns, you have to have safe storage of guns. It trivializes this. And in fact, Katie Pavlich had a, a piece on this on uh, Town Hall, uh, not Town Hall, um, let me see, what am I looking at here? Where is Katie these days? Not ca- Town Hall, though. Yes, it is. I'll get it figured out in just a second. Yep, it is, townhall.com. If you go to townhall.com slash tip sheet slash Katie Pavlich, you'll see what she's been writing about. She writes about that, but you know, she broke the story which I thought was really important. I wanted everybody to hear about this. So I was able to run Katie down the uh, latter part of last week. And we did a quick interview with her about, well, the government says it can now legally shut down any business it wants to, any gun business, any gun store, by just sending them a letter. Here's the interview I did with Katie Pavlich. As you try to become a better gun activist, become better informed, there are some really good sources out there and a lot of stuff that that's kind of questionable. And one of the really good sources is the writing from Katie Pavlich, because uh, Katie has been writing about this for several years. She's really covering it from a, a reporter's perspective more so than anything else. And when you read it, uh, when Katie writes it, basically you can believe it. And it's really a pleasure to bring her in now. Hey, Katie, how you doing? Good. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Absolutely. I mean... And I've been doing this for a gazillion years now, and it seems like there's more and more information out there, but a lot of it is not something that you want to really stake your reputation on when you're trying to build your case and make your argument. You actually do, strangely enough, real research. Yeah, you know, that old school journalism <laughs> type of thing, research and talking to people and <laughs> yeah, yeah. making sure things are correct. Yeah, I do my best. I, I made some mistakes, obviously, but I, I really do my best to get people information that they don't have, they haven't seen before, and that is relevant to what they're interested in and knowing about, when, especially when it comes to Second Amendment rights and what they're doing here in D.C., but also all over the country to kind of take those rights back. So you're in D.C., uh, and you're writing for Town Hall, that's townhall.com. So the one article that just popped up that I'm looking at, and I'm thinking, who are these guys? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau grants itself authority to shut down any business at any time. And if you would, describe that and kind of draw the connection between that and Operation Choke Point. Okay, so the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau is basically a bureaucratic government agency with a bunch of unelected officials who make decisions about how to, quote, protect consumers, meaning they regulate what they think is good or bad for people to be purchasing in our stores. And that can be anything from, you know, toys for kids to to firearms, which is obviously my focus on this this story. Mm -hmm. So last week, the Consumer, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which claims to protect consumers from bad businesses, right, um, issued through the power of Dodd-Frank a, a rule giving the agency unprecedented power to shut down businesses, no matter what the reason, at any time it wishes, through a cease and desist order. And what the problem with this is that it puts the businesses at the mercy of this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau because they cannot go back into operation 
until the government approves them to go back into operation or until a court ruling is made over an issue. And as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, because bureaucratic decisions and court rulings take a significant amount of time to you know, get flushed out, businesses can't survive during those waiting periods in terms of, of not going, you know, producing their, their goods and services. So, so they can actually shut down a business just by sending them a letter and saying, you have to shut down, and then when and if we get around to reviewing it, or you can get a judge to overturn us, only then can you reopen. Right, and that's all in the name of protecting the public, right? The Consumer Protection Bureau is protecting consumers from what these government bureaucrats who are unelected think is dangerous to uh, people who are purchasing firearms or anything else. So they're basically saying, we think this product is dangerous to society. We're going to give you a cease and desist letter, which then in return, you have to wait for us to make a decision about whether your product is safe um, or you have to get a judge to rule that we overstuck our bounds. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. And the reason why this is important is because Operation Choke Point, um, the Justice Department was, you know, caught essentially um, most recently, but this has been going on for a long time, basically squeezing banks and telling banks that they, you know, should probably not be lending to firearms dealers or ammunition dealers or people that they put on a high risk list. And I want to say that they put gun owners into the same category as child pornographers, by the way. Right. Um, and they've been doing this, you know, this, this federal government squeeze on these banks to kind of snuff gun dealerships out of business, and they got caught by Congress. And Congress is now working on a rule to to make that illegal, as if it wasn't before. And so now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is stepping in and kind of using their own high risk, you know, list to mm-hmm. do what the um, administration's agenda is, which is to kind of continue snuffing out these businesses that they disagree with. Okay, I want to ask you because you just touched on it. Is this Part of is this an outgrowth of the current administration, the Obama administration's agenda, their anti-gun, gun ban. I mean, even on, if you go to the website right now, the White House website, they say they want to ban guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this, this is now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Is this coming out of the White House, do you think? I think it's definitely coming out of the Justice Department, which uh-huh. obviously does the White House's bidding. I mean, right. Eric Holder does exactly what President Obama does through the use of force. Uh, and through the either enforcing laws more heavily or through not enforcing laws or through just making things up and hoping that a court takes too long to to kind of push back on them. So I can't say it's necessarily come directly from the White House, but I do know that it's coming out of the Department of Justice. And if you look at some of what people are pushing back on, you know, consumer groups who, who whose entire purpose is to push back against the Consumer Protection Bureau. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that this is, you know, this is a result of the administration getting caught with their illegal intimidation tactics around Operation Choke Point. Quote: Now they're taking radical steps to ensure the goals of shutting down these awful businesses are met. This is just the next step in using unaccountable agencies with their ever-expanding agency powers to meet the political goals of the administration. This is obviously a much more efficient way of shutting down lawful industries than just relying on intimidation. Sure. So, sure. This, you know, they, they see this as a free, you know, as a free market attack. They see this as the government overexerting their power. Um, and you have to take a look at exactly what kind of industries and, and businesses that they're targeting, because that's really what matters here. Well, you know, for those of us who've been covering this for decades and decades, what this is is an exact duplicate of some 25 years ago or so when the Consumer Product Safety Commission said, we're going to ban handgun ammunition as a uh-huh. hazardous product, and Congress had to come in and say, okay, here's the deal. We have passed a law that says the Consumer Product Safety Commission cannot have anything to do with firearms because you clearly are now operating as a political entity to try to get rid of guns and ammunition. So fast forward two and a half decades, and now we have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Same Mm -hmm. thing, same goal, same agenda. Are we going to have Congress come in now and say, okay, you tried this thing 25 years ago. We're going to stop you this time, too. Well, I think that that's definitely something that is on the minds of uh, people in the Senate and in the House. Uh, I know that uh, Senator Chuck Grassley has been paying attention to Operation Choke Point. Um, and I know that they've been trying to kind of rein in these government bureaucrats, but the whole issue is that they continue pushing this, right? So it gives the you know Congress a lot of distraction and too many things to do. Because this is not even just the only way that they're doing this; they're doing this with other industries as well. And so it's almost like they're running around trying to put out these flyers 
Meanwhile, all these businesses are languishing and waiting for the government to get rid of these cease and desist orders, which really they shouldn't be putting out in the first place. The, the biggest issue is you just you see the, the government saying we need to protect the consumer, the government telling you they need to protect you from something, then you know there's a problem, you know. So, right. So you have nameless, faceless bureaucrats who are deciding which businesses should stay in business and which people should simply lose their jobs because, you know what, I don't really like what you sell. So I can send you a letter that destroys your business. Mm-hmm. Right. And they've been doing that. I mean, that is something that they, they have been doing. Um, and that's essentially what they did through Operation Choke One as well, just in a right. different way through a different government agency and a different, a different issue. I mean, they don't like that people sell firearms and ammunition. So what do they do? They tell banks not to give them the resources that they need to continue running those businesses. And now the excuse is that these are unsafe products to sell, and so they want to you know, by force, get rid of them. And for those who don't understand business, if you choke off the credit, if you choke off access to banking, you have basically put a tourniquet around somebody's neck and you're going to choke that whole business to death. Exactly. So it's a serious issue that we should pay attention to. Absolutely. Now, let me fast forward because you have a book coming out. I do. I have a book coming out on July 8th. So here about in a week and a half. And uh, it's all about uh, the, the title is Assault and Flattery, The Truth About the Left War on Women." And I have an entire chapter about how gun control in itself is a war on women because it doesn't allow women to protect themselves from from threats um, wherever they may be. So I'm excited for it to come out. It's going to be, I think, pretty good. I worked hard on it. So I can't believe it's already here. But, yeah, that'll be out on July 8th, which is a Tuesday. Books are fun because they're fun to start and they're fun to finish. And in the middle, of you just hate them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's almost like being in labor. You know, people always ask me about what it's like to write a book. And I say, you know how women have kids and they say they don't really remember the pain because it's so painful. (laughs) That's kind of how it feels. (laughs) But I'm happy it's finally coming out. So Let me ask you a question. Uh, You you have written about gun rights and guns and women connected to gun rights. How did you get started? Where did your interest come from for gun rights? Well, I grew up with it. I mean, my dad um, has been teaching hunter safety courses in Arizona for 30 years. Um, You know, he's, even, you know, I just really kind of grew up around it, started hunting when I was 11 with my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, it was, it's interesting because my, my younger years as a, a kid, I was more, you know, into the firearms industry, obviously, on the hunting side. But once I moved out and went to college, I was more interested in self-defense and handgun training. So I, you know, had this kind of full range of, of things that I've been interested in. And it's been kind of fun to get involved in a lot of different things. Uh, with the industry. So and, now I'm in journalism, which allows me to kind of look at it from that angle as well. So And you went to Gunsight. You know, sorry, it was my dad, but and I had been to Gunsight. I wish I could go there every every day. I know. It's, I tell <laughs> people, I said, this, I this, this, Gunsight is like Disneyland for us gun geeks. I know, exactly. It, it really is. It is. And Buzz and Tanya, you know, are amazing. Just great uh, people. people. Uh, so. you know, and that's the whole thing. Is It's a wonderful place. Great people. You feel you're with kindred spirits. You always feel safe. Every, and everybody's wearing a gun. Everybody's wearing a loaded gun at all times. Right. It's a rule. I mean, if you show up without one, you're going to be in trouble. That's right. You know, I mean, I'm, we're talking about the receptions. We're talking about everybody there. Everybody is wearing a gun all the time. So right. it is a fabulous place. Uh, and once you go, it becomes your first time because all you're doing now is thinking, how can I get back? I got to go back. Yeah, exactly. Got to get back. Got to do the next class. Got to get better. Got to practice. That's it. it. It really is. If you want some serious training, it's a, play, a good place to go. All right, so uh, it's Katie Pavlich. You can find you on uh, Town Hall. Any other places people can look for you? Town Hall, uh, Fox News uh, as well, um, and Town Hall Magazine, which is our print edition that is out uh, monthly. All right, townhall.com. And also check out the new book, Assault and Flattery. comes out in, well, roughly a little bit over a week. It's called uh, The Pre-order Truth. order now on Amazon. Oh, there you <laughs> go. It's on Amazon. You can go. I'm looking right now. You can get it uh, Kindle or hardcover edition. Yep, absolutely. Outstanding. Well, good luck with it, Katie. Thank you. I really appreciate coming on the show. Have a good one. At Double Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make, and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably. Walk more confidently. 
When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Tired of overpaying for one concealed carry holster after another that is flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? At Alien Gear Holsters, less than $30 gets you a professional quality holster that's super stealthy and ultra comfortable. Every Alien Gear Holster is backed by a forever warranty, a 30-day test drive, and free shell trades for life in case you buy a different gun. AlienGearHolsters.com AlienGearHolsters.com Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.DoubleTapAmmo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Coming up, the whole crew chimes in in an on-topic, off-topic, free-for-all. Be sure and stick around for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, back with you here. Let's go straight to the phones. Colby is in Lewiston, Idaho on line four. Colby, how are you? Good, yourself? I am good. So you got a suggestion for us on these AR problems? Yes, any of the uh, Armalite design mil-spec versions, including the Colt, the same specs are there. Nothing has changed with the exception of three things. The magazine, the rounds themselves, and the followers. So the rounds what? that were built... Well, the rounds in Vietnam were actually a little bit different. So the neck was mm-hmm. a little bit uh, longer. So you can't really shoot the old the old version and uh, 16 type, A, not even the A1 round. Uh, it, the version of that doesn't even really work in today's weapons. The rate of twist most of the time is different. Right. But uh, a lot of guys are using 55 grain stuff. That's not originally what the development of that weapon was for. Uh, so that you've got a lo- little bit of play in there that's different. It's all coming from that magazine that he's having a problem with on his Colt. It's, uh, he needs to find a different follower that's actually going to extend the round up a little bit further than what it should be. Mm. Uh, because what's happening is it's not coming up enough, and it's going to drive that round right into the back of the barrel and not hit the feed ramp at all. Ah, and there's a couple ways he can... Yeah. <clears throat> couple ways you can actually solve that one is to obviously if you want to really cut the feed ramp which i don't advise doing unless have a gunsmith do it as you know the problems that can happen with that sure um but polish it up as well but yeah the simplest way to get a new spring new follower uh should be a lot better and that's one of the reasons if you look back the military themselves has been changing followers out over the years we've changed the rounds in themselves Hmm. okay so you, you can get new followers Pretty much from any place. Brownells, uh, a lot of different places have followers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Brownells did. And if you look back at just the Army over this Iraq tour um, that we did over the last you know decade, you can look and see when they started out with the black followers and then they went to the green followers and then they went to the tan followers. It was all because they were having failure to feed issues and things like that. And uh, that's basically what it was, was the specs for the weapons themselves hasn't really changed. But what mm-hmm. has is the ammunition itself has changed a little bit. We've gotten a little bit higher pressure, a little bit um, different types of rounds themselves. Right. And then we've also got, uh, with that, the springs themselves, if they wear out, they don't push up as much. Ah, and then, of course, sure. the follower. The follower, if it's only pushing up a sixteenth of an inch less, as you know, 
it doesn't take a lot. Well, yeah, the, the, the cartridge uh, is not lined up correctly. Yeah, instead of fighting, uh, going into the barrel, it's going to slam into the back of the barrel, and here we go. Exactly, and then it's going to cause that bullet to seep further in, and you're going to have, mm-hmm. essentially, it's a failure to feed. But it's, the reason it's not is because where it's lining up, it's just not being pushed up far enough. So a better follower would, well, would probably right. eliminate and, that problem. And the good news is, this is a really cheap solution. Yeah, definitely. I think I, you can get, like, uh, 10 or so followers from Brian Ells for like less than 10 bucks or right around 10 bucks. Yeah, they're, they're just cheap. So you just replace your followers. And the thing is, you could try that and it probably is going to work, but at least it's a cheap thing to do. Listen, I appreciate the call. That is a great suggestion, sir. And, uh, we, you know, we really get a lot of help from all of our friends here. All right, hey, well, let's go. Let's go to uh, line three next. John is with us in Texas. Hello, John. You're on Gun Talk. Thank John, you, John, you there? John for- Hey, John, yes, how you doing? Go ahead. Just a moment. Yes, sir, there was a comment earlier that was made about the, um, uh, uh, that with Google we couldn't do anything because they were a, uh, a, a private company. I disagree with that because I think that uh, what our judicial system has recently done in Arizona is they told a couple that, and, and I'm, uh, regardless of your sexual preference, they told the couple that they had to provide wedding cakes for a gay couple that they didn't want to provide it for. If mm-hmm. the government can do that, or if the judicial system can do that, we certainly may have a fight to get ahead of us, but we can also force Google to do some things. Hmm. Okay, interesting idea. I don't know. <laughs> you would have to get a new president and a uh, new party in charge of Congress for that to happen. But uh, I think that is a worthwhile endeavor in, in and of itself. And I gather that you are an AR guy. Yes, sir, I am. All right. If you will hold on, we're going to get your information. We're going to shoot you a Reliabolt so you can put it in that uh, AR. This is the uh, Reliabolt from Sharps Rifle Company, srcarms.com. Appreciate the call. I don't know. Can you imagine Eric Holder telling Google, yeah, you guys have got to allow gun ads on. I'm not thinking that's happening. Well, which brings us to, of course, that we simply have to change who's in the White House and everybody who comes with him, all his entourage. That's really pretty simple. Not easy, but simple. It's simple because all you have to do is get enough people registered to vote and then get them to the polls and then they have to vote that starts with you you got to take care of that yourself 866 talk gun be right back with more gun talk now broadcasting nationwide on radio via satellite and through downloads itunes the gun talk app and other podcast clients you're listening to gun talk with tom gresham all right we got them lined up mike sean darian dp don't go anywhere we're going to get to all of you okay i got to talk about this just got this email from ed he says tom and staff please mention this uh about these gun companies customer service experiences today on your show if you can on your father's day show I mentioned to you that my new Springfield Armory XDS 9mm had a really heavy, over 8-pound trigger pull. You advised me to contact Springfield Armory and tell them about it and, quote, they will take care of you, unquote, close quote. I I was hoping they would. (laughs) I did that on the next day, shipped it FedEx on their emailed label, and I got it back last Friday, less than two weeks total, with a perfect 5.5-pound pull. It took them just three working days to receive, adjust the trigger, and then ship it back to me. I commend Springfield Army for their fast and thorough customer service. I mentioned it to them that I would compliment them on your show. Good deal. He says, but it's hard to get you on the phone. Yeah, we're pretty busy. I said, I also uh, tried Para-USA customer service on one of their 1911 magazines having a follower problem. And immediately they said that they were sending a brand new one made by Mekar to me in the mail. They were very courteous and great for not requiring me to send bills of sale or old magazine for replacement. Thanks to these gun companies for their great customer service. I find that to be true pretty much across the board with the gun companies. They just take care of people. That's who we are. It's who they are. It's our community. I know that sounds Pollyannish, and I, I get it, but it is a community, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. And I get nothing but great reports from gun companies about gun companies and their customer service. So anyway, just wanted to pass that along. Our, our email, by, by the way, if you want to send me an email, tom at guntalk. Dot com. Line two, Mike's with us out of Painted Post, New York. Mike, thanks for your patience. Yes, uh, I've got a new Mossberg MVP Flex okay. that uh, is 
pretty nice rifle. It's shooting, I'd say, one-inch groups until I broke the extractor on it. Uh-oh. And what happened was, uh, with reloading, you custom tailoring loads for different guns. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got a two twenty three single shot that I neck size for. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can see where I'm going here. Yep, and yep, by yep. neck sizing, the case was, I inadvertently, I grabbed some of the ammo. Uh, I try to keep it segregated, but I grabbed some of the ammo for that single shot two twenty three. Mm-hmm. And when I went to close the bolt, it didn't want to go close. So, of course, usually the big hairy eyebrow, you got to <laughs> hit it one time. And I, I, yeah. so I, I hit it once, and it still didn't go, and I thought better, and I thought, well, better back up here. And then I try to extract it, and it doesn't want to extract, no, and so yeah. you get it's a live round, so you want to get it out. Yep. And uh, it, I broke the extractor on it. It's not a real heavy-duty extractor, but I think under normal conditions, it's probably more than adequate. Well, and of course, they had to design this unique extractor for this rifle so that you could have a bolt-action rifle using AR magazines, so 223. I mean, it's a very cool system, but what you did was try to cam this thing down on a, in essence, it was an unsized case. You'd only size the yes. neck, and yep. it's just not, not going to chamber. Right, and uh, it's a uh, really, I like the, uh, of course, with New York State, we've got uh, all our uh, forbidden features, yeah. and this has them. I have the collapsible stock pistol grip, detachable magazine, muzzle brake, all on a... Uh, <laughs> on a bolt-action gun. Bolt-action rifle. <laughs> I love it. And, 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 <laughs> I and the flex system is cool. Isn't that flex system amazing? Yes, and it, it works well. And like I say, the rifle shoots really well as, you know, until I broke it. But <laughs> so did, have you contacted Mossberg? Yes, and they they've, uh, they sent me a new extractor. They got one out fairly quick, and it was for the 308 instead of the 223. Ah. So they've got another one in route. Okay. So, and, uh, All right. Well, look, I appreciate the range report. I'm, I'm glad the rifle's working for you, and uh, you might want to do something else in terms of marking that ammo so you get the right one in the right box. But listen, I appreciate the report, Mike. I want to talk to Sean on line one out of Beckley, West Virginia. Hey, Sean, what's this about your hey. AR? Hey, well, this is a very rudimentary question, so I feel kind of silly asking now. But I've got two. I've got one that's brand new. I've owned it since day one out of the box. How do I know when it's time to replace a bolt or a barrel? I mean, do you guys have like a recommended round count? Okay, or that's, is there, is that's, there, is that's a, a great question. Usually uh, on a bolt, if it breaks or something, you can. Uh, that's unlikely. The reason you go to the reliable bolt is it simply works longer without cleaning and that's the main thing for the reliable that's just as you shoot it and shoot it and shoot it guns get gunky this will keep working for you longer than the standard bolt that's what they have found on a barrel the reason you replace a barrel is the accuracy starts to go and probably with that rifle you're probably going to look at 5,000 rounds or so before you start having a falling off of accuracy and truthfully if it starts shooting uh, an inch and a half or two inches at 100 yards, that may still be okay with you. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. If it's a design for fine accuracy or sniper type of work, then you want it to shoot better than that. If you're just out shooting at the range and shooting tin cans and having a ball, who cares? Just keep shooting it. You know, at a certain point, point, five, ten thousand 10,000 rounds, it's going to say, okay, I'm tired. The barrel's just not shooting well anymore. Get a new barrel for it. Well, see, I'm so glad you said that because I'm well over 5,000 rounds and it clearly could not be the shooter, so it's just time to change the barrel. That's, that's the problem. I like the way you think, man. <laughs> hey, Sean, as long as you're at it, you want one of these reliable bolts? I would love to have one of those. That would be fantastic. Okay, well, we'll send you one of these from uh, Sharp's Rifle Company. We'll take care of that. So uh, right. you hold on thanks, and we'll get your information for, for thanks you. Thanks for everything you do for us. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate that. Let's see. I tell you what, uh, Darian, don't go anywhere. I'm going to take a quick break here. When I come back, we're going to have seven year old Darian joining us right here. 866 Talk Gun. That'll get you in. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. One machine, one operator. Each machine is run by a single pair of hands. Hands that spend all day, every day, learning the machine inside and out. We don't believe in quotas. The point is crafting faultless ammunition, no matter how long that takes. It's not quick or easy. Being the best never is. Black Hills Ammunition. It started with our hands. 
The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. You already know Liberty Safes are great values. Now they're offering an even sweeter deal for Gun Talk listeners. At LibertySafe.com, click on the Fat Boy Safe and type in Tom. Liberty will give you up to $250 off your purchase. Protect the things you value most. LibertySafe.com, click the Fat Boy Safe, promo code Tom, save up to $250. That's LibertySafe.com. LibertySafe.com. Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit VanishingParadise.org. That's VanishingParadise.org. You may be a new shooter, a longtime gun owner, or even a police officer or soldier. No personal defense handgun is fully equipped without a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge, Crimson Trace. Want to have some more fun after today's radio broadcast of Gun Talk? Stick around for the after show with Tom, Jim, Michelle, and Michael. Now, more Gun Talk. All right, let's go straight to Darian. He's on line four in North Dakota. Hello, Darian. Hi. How are you? I understand you're seven years old? Yep. Okay. So what kind of shooting do you do? Um, and. I shoot um, Target Factory. Okay. What what kind of rifle are you using? AR-15. AR-15. How'd you get started? How old were you when you started shooting an AR-15? Probably five. Oh, you've been shooting a couple of years now. Uh-huh. All right. Well, what is it you want to tell me about? Um... I think the Target Factory is really good for kids. The Target Factory? Because, because you can see what you hit. Because the uh, bottles will fly up in the air. Ah, okay. Well, I'm not familiar with the Target Factory, so I'm going to have to take a look at that. Okay, I'm looking now. Target factor, Target-Factory.com. And they, they make some cool targets there. They look like bottles and all sorts of stuff. You've been shooting those, huh? Uh-huh. Good deal. I like that. Uh, this is, you know, anything that makes it fun uh, to shoot, I'm all for that. We've got uh, colorful targets, uh, American-made business, and uh, and you're shooting an AR-15. I think that's great. Now, I'm. we should probably let people know, you're not going to the range by yourself, obviously. You're going with your dad or somebody? My dad takes me. Your dad takes you. Okay, so you're, you're shooting under adult supervision. Tell you what, um, how about if we do this? Would you be okay if we sent you a new bolt for your AR-15? That would be great. 
Okay, we're going to send you a reliable. Now, I'm, I'm over the limit now, but I think the folks at Sharps Rifle Company will say, okay, that's okay. Darian has to have a reliable. We'll take care of you, Darian. So don't hang up, okay? Uh, we're going to get your address, and then we'll make sure that they send you a reliable for your AR. And Darian, thank you so much for calling. How cool is that? I mean, really. All right, guys, we are, we're out of reliable boat, so, uh, but we'll keep talking here. I want to talk to DP uh, on line three just outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hey, DP. Hey, yeah, Tom. I've got a Sig Sauer 400, mm-hmm. and you had a previous caller said that they were trying to take them off the market. The ATF was trying to stop them. I had not heard anything at all about that. Uh. I'm not sure that we had somebody say that. I, I, it may have been somebody just saying that there uh, certain areas are trying to get rid of ARs altogether. But I don't know of any effort to get rid of specifically the, the Sig Model 400. Have, have you heard anything like that? Not until I listened to your show and that. Okay. You know, that's no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think maybe it's, somebody was saying that uh, some in the government are trying to get rid of ARs altogether. Just basically any semi-automatic rifle. They just don't like semi-automatics. And they particularly don't like the ones that look evil. You know, like evil guns, like seven-year-olds shoot uh, at the range. So, But no, I don't think it's a problem. But let me ask you a question. How do you like that Model 400? I like it. I haven't yeah. got to shoot it as much as I'd like. But I like it. I've probably put something over 100 rounds to it. Never well, had yeah, a problem, and I use that, a red dot scope. Okay. Yeah, they are very nice rifles. I like the way they shoot. So if you only have 100 rounds through it, you got a lot more shooting to do. We need to be talking in terms of thousands of rounds. We've got to shoot a lot in that thing. So take that out. But no, I don't, as far as I know, nobody is targeting, so to speak, the uh, the Model 400 SIG. It's a great rifle, by the way. Uh, Heiko is in Carson City, Nevada, online, too. Hey, hello, Heiko. Uh, hi, Tom. Uh, I just wanted to chime in on the AR-15. Uh, mm-hmm. You had a caller that called in about having malfunction with magazines. I just find out that you have to be critical on the, uh, the factory crimp, like on the 55 grain. Uh, I have no problem with the 62 grain NATO. However, sometimes the 55, what will happen is as you firing them, the uh, the bullet will go back into the case, and then you have powder all over the place. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a malfunction. And the only other thing I had was uh, a friend of mine that took him out, an old veteran. He he just purchased a brand new Ruger, twenty two Magnum. You were talking about that last week, mm-hmm. and it took me two both hands to pull the trigger. It was oh like my. a fifteen twenty pound thing. I mean, you could have probably thrown it faster than you could pull the trigger, to be honest with you. So well, did I you tell him, him it needs to get it fixed? I, I told him, send it back to Ruger. They will take care of you on that, and um, we'll go out to the range after we have it fixed. Exactly. So, well, I appreciate you doing that. You know, the, the, the gun companies, and thank you, Heiko, the, the gun companies don't want you to have a, a gun that's not right. I mean, and Ruger's turning out more than a million guns a year now. I mean, it's an incredible number of guns. You're going to get a few they are going to get out, and they're just not quite what they should be. And it's like we had this report earlier. Somebody said, I got a, a Springfield Armory, and the trigger's too heavy. I said, call Springfield. He did. They said, send it back. They fixed it. Send it back. He had a, a pair of ordnance, an issue with that. They sent in the part for that. Call Ruger, they're going to take care of it. Don't put up with this. If you've got a gun that's not working right, call and ask somebody. Now, if you've had it for a number of years and something changes on it, now that's a different issue. It's not a, a factory defect. And something could be worn out, could be gummed up in there, could be, you know, who knows? I don't, I don't know. But there could be a lot of different things. That's where your local gunsmith really comes in. Also having some other friends that, you know, when you have a gun that really is just worn out and no good anymore, that's what you do. When, for your good friends, you sell them the gun that you don't want anymore, right? <laughs> 866-TALK-GUN. we still got room for you, and we can also hold you into the after show, which you definitely want to be a part of. 866-TALK-GUN. Join the NRA via Tom Gresham's Gun Talk website and receive $10 off the regular membership price. Log on to guntalk.com for details. You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk.
Just because we're wrapping up on the air doesn't mean we're done talking about guns. Stick around for the after show. It's our podcast only version designed to include all the stuff we simply couldn't fit into a regular show. Call in now at one Tom Talk Gun. Now back to Tom. You'll have time to get you in. 866-TALK-GUN. That'll get you here. We're taking all sorts of calls and questions. Here's a couple of them. Mark is in Tulsa on four. Hello, Mark. What you looking for? Uh, thanks for taking my call. i am sure. uh, been reloading for a lot of years and partial to the 357 Magnum pistols. Okay. Uh-huh. And I was thinking about getting a 357 Magnum rifle, either a uh, rifle or carbine, flavor mm-hmm. or both. I was wondering if you could recommend a decent, affordable rifle in well, a 357 cartridge. I tell you, one I like is the uh, Henry Repeating Arms. They've got the big boy. And it's a really gorgeous, attractive lever-action rifle. And you can get it in 44 Magnum, 45 Colt, or 357 Magnum. Okay. I, I mean, it's just a gorgeous <laughs> rifle. It's got a big uh, yellow side on it, you know, like the yellow boy. And it's just, just really attractive. It, I think that would be a really nice rifle to have. Okay, looks don't make a whole lot of difference to me. I buy shooters. Uh, I don't put my rifles out for display, so nobody but me sees them. So. Okay. Well, you might do some poking around. You might find a, a Marlin or some other lever action out there in, in three fifty seven that you could uh, find. Maybe some that are coming in from the Italians. Uh, I'm not sure what they're bringing in right now, but they make a lot of replicas. So that would be basically what I would, you know, say. Check that out. If you're not interested particularly in looks, and if you wouldn't mind use, you can always look on GunBroker.com. And I bet you can find something there too. Okay. All right. Okay. Look, I, w- I wish you luck with it, sir. Let me run down and grab Giuseppe. Uh, it's uh, on line three out of Fresno. How you doing, Giuseppe? Hi. Um, how's, uh, thank you for taking my call. You bet. How can we help you? Uh, I was wondering how to get started on cowboy shooting, cowboy action. Ah, okay. Uh, are you familiar with the website, sassnet, S-A-S-S-N-E-T dot com? Um, no. Okay, that's where you go. That's the Single Action Shooting Society. That's the organizing group. And you go to sassnet, N-S-A-S-S-N-E-T dot com, and it'll have information uh, about where the shoots are and where there are clubs. And you basically just get started there, find out what the rules are. And what you really want to do is just find where there's a shoot going on, where there's a club, and go there. As soon as you get there, and all you have to do is say, I'm interested in this, and then just hold on because they're going to grab you up and they're going to bring you in. They're going to wrap their arms around you and say, fine, here's what you need. We're going to get you going. And if you don't have what you need, they're going to loan it to you. They're going to help you get going. It is unbelievably easy as long as you take the first step. And, and frankly, this is true of uh, IDPA, USPSA, almost any kind of student. You show up and say, guys, I don't know anything about this, but I think I'd like to do this. That they will help you. So, Giuseppe, that's what you do. You go to uh, sasnet, S-A-S-S-N-E-T dot com, and you'll have all the information. And for those who don't understand, Single Action Shooting Society, think of it as defensive shooting, action shooting from 100 plus years ago with single action revolvers, lever action rifles, uh, double barrel side-by-side shotguns and also pump shotguns as long as they have an external hammer on them like the uh, Winchester Model 97 a lot of fun stuff alright we've got uh, Alan we're going to hold you over if you'd like to join us call us right now 866-TALK-GUN that'll get you in here we have a few things we want to talk about maybe you have something you'd like to add to the mix by all means join us then in the meantime go out and do a little shooting take family members with you Think of Darian, seven years old, shooting an AR-15. They're never too young. Get them started right, and you won't have to worry about your kids at that point. Have yourself a great week. Be safe out there.